Okay, getting ready here for second half action. Uh, any stats that you want to share with us in the first half, Rick? Well, I just think, you know, Nantucket's been completely dominant. I, I was talking to Coach Gamble at halftime about, and he said the same thing I mentioned earlier. I don't know why Cape Tex insists on putting the, what look, appears to be their three best players on attack when they're not getting the ball. It seems that it stands to reason that if they played some midfield, they'd be a little fresher and have some better stick skills out there, but that's just the way it is. Well, the stat that jumps out to me is... Uh Sam O'Keefe, the freshman, got the hat trick. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he, wow. he, he didn't start the game, right? He gets no, in and picks up the hat yeah. trick hat trick as a uh, sub. So that's and, the main stat I see. And he had a good game against Monomore as well. Yeah, he, Sam's kind of, he, he's, he's kind of sneaky. He, uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't look like he's that comfortable moving around out there, but he, next thing you know, he's, he's around the goal and he's got a good left hand. I guess he's a left-handed hockey player. Bartlett with the poke check almost gets it away from 38 or 35. 35 is the big left, the big lefty who helped them out. Was a big was one of the featured guys on this team last year. Number 20 is a righty. He's he's looking to dodge from up top. They're saying get, they're saying get the ball to X, which means get up. X is the folks. If you don't know, is a spot directly behind the goal, and that's where you operate your offense from for the most part. They're gonna oh. pick, pick on ball now. Oh, <laughs> nice little man. Now, I don't understand. This is really the first time in a while they've had the ball behind the goal. Uh, Owen West shadowing his man. Looks like he's, a, he's, gonna, he's, a, he's carrying the ball lefty. I think this is a right-handed player, though. He's going to come back. Or maybe not. You hit him in the head. Well, you know, the, there's what they call a brush. And if, yeah. you, if you slightly graze them, they're not going to call it. <laughs> 35, and he's going to go set up a left-handed move here. This is a replay of last year. It's, it, could, it could be that same game over again. That brush in your head, though, Gina, does require ice later on. Yeah. <laughs> Get rid of the it's headache. Dick, you missed it the other day against, oh, yes. against Monomoy, one of the Monomoy defenders, who was a good player, uh, got hit with a shot in his helmet, Ooh. and I uh, opened up a big gash Ooh. in the bridge of his nose. Yeah, that's, uh, that's tough to see. That's tough to see. I'm glad I missed it. McVicker playing. On that left-handed wing, now I hate, west. I hate to see a serious injury of any type to either either side. Bartlett shadowing his man up top, number 35, the big lefty. You know, Ben Lombardi up with the loose ball. Nantucket might have a fit, might have a four on three here if they set it up. No, they're gonna slow it down, slow break. No need to be in a hurry. You know, once again, that's probably a play that you wouldn't want to make against a, in a close game. Let's settle it down here, guys. Duart comes up with it, looking to shoot. Thinks better of it, pulls it out. Carries it lefty on that right-hand wing. Now up top to Terrain Burton, the speedy sophomore. Look nice look inside. Oh, oh big, big save. save. Big time save there. He, he didn't realize how much time he had. That was Chance Pollock. He could have, could have taken a little bit longer and finished that shot. But most of the time that shot goes in. Yeah. And, most uh, of the time it goes in. It, he, he did have more time to uh, pick a spot, right? Probably couldn't believe how open he was. Owen West up to the speedy Burton. Well, I'm, not a, I'm not afraid to admit that I am getting cold, so I, I know those kids down in the field must oh, be right. freezing right at this point. Well, the uniforms have to be drenched. Definitely. They're jumping up and down to try to stay warm. It's so cold. Nantucket moving the ball up top. Spoke to Coach Gamble at halftime. He said they thought the team was playing well. So did Coach Aloise. He said the same thing. I think, uh, you know, they, a lot of assisted goals, as you said, Dick, through to another save. Through save. to Hornisfager. Goal is coming alive down there. Well, I think, you know, Ty made the mistake of shooting, if, if, you know, if shooting the ball at the goalie's feet is uh, not where you want to go with it. You want to be a little more off hip. Duart with a loose ball. Now coming around the left-hand side. Look at the Ooh. backhander shot. Another shovel shot. We, oh. He scored on that in the first quarter, but it was disallowed. He was in the crease. He almost got his head taken off by the goalie, and a goalie came on a long way on that one. Harnisfeger to bring it on from behind. Junior attackman slash midfielder over to Duart. And that, that's another thing that I think the coaches will probably think about at some point this year. Is they've got several guys looking pretty good at attack. And they might be able to play some another of these. Another save. Uh, might be able to play some of these oh, attackers. Oh, the almost rolled in behind them, though. Yeah. 
what we call the Gilman Clear, just heave it upfield. Pick, picked up by uh, by McVicker, or yep. Alex holding the ball up top. Beautiful shot. Alex with a sidearm shot from about 16 yards. Gets the, gets the top left corner. That's Alex's uh, second of the day. Score goes up another notch. 6.33 uh, to uh, go here. And I think, uh, I think the clock is moving, guys. I think the clock is moving. It is moving, Dick. Yeah. It is moving. <clears throat> I think I, I saw Coach Aloisi speaking with the C Cape Tech coach at halftime, and they might have been sort of agreeing that that might not be a bad idea for everybody's sake, including Dick's. I have a nice warm <laughs> wood stove all ready to. Do you ready? have a wood stove? I have a wood stove, yeah. Gosh, Dick, you put everything in, in there, don't you? That place is I got cozy. All, I got the, I got a little. The wood's all in there, the newspaper's all in there, just gotta go in and light the match and poof! <laughs> That's sweet. On a night day like a this. Day like today. Wow. That goal is brought to play fairgrounds. Wheelers are always welcome at the fairgrounds. Family restaurant where friends meet, sports bar, multiple TVs to watch all your games at the fairgrounds. Uh, Whalers really got we're fortunate not to give up a goal there. Owen West picked the on the break, came way too far outside, and that's something that they're going to have to work on. We have a backup goal in there now, right? No, that's still uh, that's still Keegan Downey. Still, okay. Our backup goalie is Chance Pollock, and he's playing in, he's, he's playing in he's the field playing. today. So I have a feeling that uh, Keegan will probably go the whole way. Yeah. Terrain Burton backing in now. There's no, if you want to dodge their terrain, someone has to move it clear through for you, and nobody has, so let's move the ball along. McKechnie up top. Now he cuts through, make a little space for, uh, for Alex, looks inside. N nice dunk for Duart there. Small to Duart for Nantucket's uh, 14th goal of the game. Duart picks up his first, could go with an assist. He had one taken away earlier on a crease violation. Score goes up another notch, 14 to 1. Your Nantucket Whalers, portions of this uh, game brought to us by the Downy Flake. They'll be opening up next week. Yay! The Downy Flake is coming back. Check, oh. check it out. Yeah. I don't know how you guys did it this winter. Nothing open, hardly anything open. Everything's right. closed. Tough. Yes, it was. Uh, there was a period there that uh, it was hard to find any. Uh, place, especially for breakfast uh, on a Saturday morning. I always like to go out Saturday morning for breakfast. Donnie Flake was closed. Island Kitchen was closed. The airport was closed. That's right, the airport's opening up again, aren't they? The airport, the airport should be opening up in May, right? Okay, Nantucket. We need to get them as a sponsor, Dick. Yes, that would be nice. 36, James Calkins came up with a nice loose ball there, moved it along smartly. Another reserve in there. Nantucket substituting liberally now. And they really have been for a while, but a few more numbers out there that I don't recognize. So, Duart now runs into trouble, dodges through and shoots, and almost gets another one. So it's all your Nantucket Whalers, and uh, they're mixing and matching. As Rick said, a lot of backup players. And you uh, you tell me at halftime about how many the the sport of lacrosse has grown at the high school level over the years. Yeah, you know it's uh, you know for years nice lacrosse save. was really a cult sport because all this partly because the sticks were all made entirely of wood and they were fabricated by the Native Americans up in Canada. 
but with the advent of the plastic stick in the 70s, it's really grown. I mean, in, in, in the 1950s and 60s, there were under, well under 100 teams in the country, high school boys teams. That By the 70s, it was up around 500, and today, there are over 3,000 teams. Yeah, when I, when I was in high school, that was in the 50s, uh, I, didn't know, I didn't know of any high school playing lacrosse. And the only fact I knew about lacrosse was that uh, it was the national sport of Canada. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're watching hockey, Bruins, so there was only the six original pro teams in those days. Yeah. Uh, but it, I was fascinated at the fact that all the players were Canadian. Very rarely, there was maybe one American. The Europeans hadn't come over yet. Right. There was one or two Americans that would make it. You know, there were 99.9% .9 Canadian. And I was fascinated that lacrosse was a national sport and, of Canada. And, and I'll tell you something else. <laughs> I, I'll guarantee you, every one of those Canadian hockey players also played lacrosse. And they played they play indoors. Well, th that was it. That Wayne, was Wayne it. Gretzky was a great lacrosse player. Yeah. Well, that was it because... The, the, the athletes in those era could not make a living playing the sport. Right. They all had a second job. So as you're saying, hockey was their first job, lacrosse was their yeah, second the, job. The, yeah, they, and there's a lot of semi-pro indoor lacrosse up in Canada and upstate New York, and uh, that is a rough sport. Uh, I was talking to Joaquin Leckie from Nantucket a few years ago, and he played in the national championship game for Syracuse, but he said he was more nervous playing indoors up in Canada against these guys because it's, uh, it's pretty scary. Here's a, here's a name from the past, and I'll, and I'll tell you why I remember it. Jack Bionda. He was a hockey player, mostly for Toronto, played many different teams, did play for the Bruins a little bit, and uh, he had the ugliest looking nose you could ever imagine. <laughs> because it got because broken. It got broken. <laughs> well, you want to take a guess on how many times it was broken? <laughs> Yeah, they didn't more, use more than five dozen. It really? Was, it no was broken way. like. Oh, no. It was broken like 62, 63 odd times. But like 55 of them, or maybe 60 of them, were broken during a lacrosse game, really? not, not during a ice hockey game. So and in those days, and I assume, it, I assume in lacrosse too, in those days, ice hockey, Gino, in the 50s, nobody wore helmets, yeah. including the goalies. They wore helmets when they lacrosse, but they were very rudimentary <laughs> in terms of the face masks. Um, I mean, even when I was playing, nobody, you know, nobody wore uh, mouth guards. A lot of guys didn't wear arm pads and shoulder pads. Okay, 12 to 15 to 1 after three periods. We'll be back with fourth period action. Makes a lot of money on it. Okay, fourth period action on the way. It's all your Nantucket wills. A lot of substituting going on. It should be a lot more this final period. Yeah, yeah Nantucket has some of their uh, lesser used players out there, obviously. I'm sure their parents might be watching, and I apologize. I, I tried to get all the numbers down before the game, but missed a couple out of the scorebook. So, your son's out there, and I don't know his name. I'm, I'm sorry. I'll try to do a better job next time. And I've been off island for a while, so I did not get a roster myself, and I apologize for that. And we I have, we have number 49, Will Malikin, at, uh, at long stick defense. Oh, our next game's going to be a softball game, right, Dick? Yes, uh, we're talking about next week. Uh, we're, we're planning on doing uh, on uh, the tenth, a week from today, uh, girls softball, and they're they're going against take Cape Tech, and then we're going to uh, schedule a girls lacrosse game, possibly next Thursday, the twelfth. Uh, and then there's a break, uh, school vacation week, so we'll try to get a couple games in before the uh, school vacation break. Uh, Right now, there's no games on the schedule for a vacation. Uh, you know, if you get a lot of makeup dates, you might have to use that, but I, I don't foresee that happening. Once you say you're not going to play during vacation week, it's, right. it's, it's crazy to say we're going to do Are you do guys going to do the North Reading game here? That's probably one, oh. one of the best games they'll play this year. We'll, we'll, we'll put that on. You hear that, Gino? we got to do What's the that? North Reading game. When? The boys. So a week from Saturday. A week oh, from during the vacation. Uh, no, no, maybe it's worth running this. It can't be this Saturday. I'll get my schedule back out here and find out for sure as long as we're talking about it. Because that game, we we really have to. You know, it's April. They're a good team. April's that that's this coming Saturday, April seventh. Is it? Yeah. Oh wow. That's a big one, right? That's a huge. Well, it's it's certainly it's, it's certainly probably be the most competitive team they play regular season this year. Oh, what 
a collision there. What happened? Oh, was, Big flags. He, oh, he, 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 threw, he, threw, he threw a flag, and it looks like, looks like. Uh, What's he gonna call? I think Isaac Corbett got in the middle of it there. He yeah, might have gotten stopped the clock. Either. I think I think Isaac might have gotten knocked down from behind. I'm not sure though. Yeah, it is. I I just saw the collision, and I didn't know who uh, I'm, initiated. I'm it. not sure the ref did either. But uh, when you're ahead 15 to one, they're probably gonna call the call it. On you. Oh, they did call. Okay, yeah. Oh no, it, it looks like yeah. it, it looks like it's on uh, Cape Tech. I think that's what happened. I think Isaac might have gotten cheaped a little bit, and that's why he was uh, expressing his displeasure with the young fellow from Cape Tech. We're gonna do our three stars, uh, Rick. So be thinking about that. It's kind of hot on a day like today. Yeah, I. I I know a couple of mine already. I'll scratch my head for my last one here. I'll give you a few minutes before we put them together. Can I see your score sheet? These, these are the goals. These are the assists underneath. Easy, Jackson. Easy. Eight twenty-one to go here. Near Tucket, uh, going to go to three and zero in the league. Three and zero on the season. We spoke about. It. The competition in the league is uh, on the weak side. Yeah, you know. But you, gotta, you win your league, you go to the tournament anyway, so that's always the main goal. Well, you know, and we're talking about the possibility of a new league next year, which would make it uh, It would be a, tr a true Cape and Islands league with uh, some of the teams that used to be in the Maritime League with us, as well as like Barnstable, as well as some of the teams we used to play non-league, like Falmouth, uh, Sandwich, uh, uh, and uh, DY. So you know that would make sense for us, and I think it, it would it would help everyone. The um, it would probably be a two-tiered situation where you play the smaller teams once and the big, larger teams twice. But right now, right now, everybody in the league is a Cape team anyway. So all the what a are shot still that in. was! James Culkins. Not we, much room there. That's a great shot. James Culkins, I'm not sure if James is a freshman or sophomore. He wove his way through there, finished a right-handed shot. While we were talking about the uh, um, Canadian stuff, uh, Ty Harnischfeger also scored an unassisted goal. So Nantucket's just pretty much in cruise control at this point. Okay, six and a half minutes to go in this one. And it's very raw, very muddy. Yeah, the, the footing hasn't really been that bad. Uh, no, just a couple of slips, yeah. But the worst thing about playing a game on a day like today is you put the field in a lot worse condition than it was before the well, game. Well, that's exactly right, especially in New England at this time of year, that grass is just trying to get going. And, Sets it back a little bit. Maybe, maybe we'll live to see a, a plastic field here, Dick. You never know. <laughs> now, did they use this field for any practice, or did they do all the practicing? All, all the practicing is being done over at uh, 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 Bacchus Lane. So that saves that saves the field yeah. a little bit if you're just using it for games. Yeah, it's in better shape than it used to be in the spring. Here's that big lefty. There you go. He did you know, it again. His second goal of the game. And, um, you know, once again, I just don't really understand why they're not getting this their three attackmen more involved either at attack or, or inverting them up at the midfield because uh, they look like they you know number one there's another lefty and he's hardly touched the ball at all and uh watching him warm up i thought he looked like their best player okay so that makes it 16 to 2 five minutes to go on this do you have your three stars ready to go yeah um you want me to go first, go first you want to go, go first you go first Dick. Okay, I'm going to give my number three star to uh, Spencer West. I thought he was a little fire plug uh, when the game uh, was starting, and uh, I have him unofficially for two goals and assist. My number two star to uh, Alex Small. I have him also for two goals and assist. 
I thought Alex could have had a lot more. He had a lot, lot, lot of good looks. Uh, did not take advantage of all of them. Uh, he could have had a, a real multiple uh, game. And my number one star is going to go to the uh, freshman who came off the bench with the hat trick. Uh, Sam O'Keefe. I have him unofficially for three goals. Yeah, Dick, I agree with you there. I'm, you know, I have uh, O'Keefe and, uh, and 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 was Spencer West. As two of my stars, and I, I also thought that uh, just in generally speaking, the, the, the reserve midfielders looked good, uh, all of them. Uh, uh, Hunter McNern, uh, I'm not sure that's how you pronounce your name, Hunter, I apologize if it's not correct. I'm a Kernan maybe. Uh, and, uh, and, and really, uh, you know, Culkins and then some, of these, some of these younger guys coming off um, really are going to pay dividends for this team down the, down the road. There's... On cue, there's a there's a Keith with another ground ball. He's he's looked very good today. And Darian Dorks had another solid game as well. You know, in the preseason, I would have thought before the season, I would have told you that Darian was going to be kind of forced to carry the load by himself and attack. But I think it's really a, a great thing for him to have these younger guys come and pick things up as well as uh, as uh, Spencer West, um, because now they have a pretty well-rounded attack unit. And I wouldn't be surprised at some point to see some of these attackmen play a little midfield as the season progresses, trying to develop a little depth out there. It's always good to, uh, for the coaching staff and certainly good for the player if you can play a couple of positions rather than be pigeonholed into one position. And I think we see that with our beloved Patriots, you know. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> they, exactly right. They, uh, you know, somebody goes down and all of a sudden somebody just moves over from another position because they can play two or three positions. Well, you know, well, Having played and coached at small schools, I mean, my, my alma mater, both high school and college, where I, I coached at both of those places as well, and here at Nantucket, obviously, um, when, you're, when, when you have small numbers to work with, one of the ways to make it work is to have guys play more than one spot. 30. I don't have him on my roster. One of the young guys, again, we apologize. That, so we'll uh, need to have those next time, huh? Yeah. Can we get, are they yeah. easy to get? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I think sometimes you can find them online, but I usually go into school, into the school and pick them all up. Yeah. But being away, I didn't get a chance to get by there today. Well, you know, Harness, Harness Faker's a guy who, um, you know, with, with West, McNer, uh, McKechner, um, and, um, O'Keefe looking so good, you might see a guy like a harness figure play a little bit of midfield. You know, you might see some midfielders bump down to attack at times. Um, just to see how the roster shakes out as the, as the season progresses. Oh, that's a takedown. I'm not sure what the big guy do. Yeah, I don't know if that was illegal. I mean, they got, got him for a hold. Got us for a hold. Now, let's, see if they, let's see if they can have a nice possession here. This might be their last possession. See if they can take advantage of it. They have two rows. And only like 122 to go. Yeah, I think this will be their last possession. And Nantucket comes up with it. Oh, there's speaking of versatility, there's, uh, there's Terrain Burton playing defense. I'm surprised he... Uh, he didn't take the shot on that. <laughs> he took the pass. You know, it's, 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 fun, it's funny to see a guy like Terrain. It's, if Terrain ends up playing at the next level in college, a lot of times if you're playing for a bigger program, they'll take a guy like him who was a star midi or attackman in high school and, and give you a long stick. Some of the best long sticks in the college game are former, are former attackmen. Well, the clock's ticking down here, Gino. 33 seconds. So the Whalers are going to go to 3-0 and on the season, 3-0 and in the league. And uh, all in all, it turned out to be a good day. You know, you wonder, the rain came in late. They're already getting over here. But, you know, you just have so many days to play games. You just right. can't keep putting them off because all of a sudden, you are, you're trying to fit in four or five games the last week of the season. That's yeah, not easy. I think it was 2007 and we played something like seven games in nine days because, yeah. because early, early in the season we didn't play the games when we should have. Yeah, it's, it's easy to say, oh, 
yeah, let's cancel and play next week. Well, next yeah. week catches up to you in a hurry. Well, it's, it's easy to say that, especially when you're not the coach. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because those boat rides get a little old. All right, so uh, we'll uh, congratulate the whalers here. and uh, we, I, we don't want to scare the fans here, Dick. <laughs> I'm Dick. That's Rick. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thanks for, thanks for watching, folks, and uh, go Whalers. Yeah, remember, uh, we'll be back here next week's softball game, and we enjoyed having Rick here today. And well, thanks, Dick. Remember, Rick, put a smile on your face each and every day, even if you're laughing at yourself. Well, that, that's easy to do, let me tell you. Go Whalers. Go Celtics. Go Bruins. Go Red Sox. And go the Bears. Yeah, baby! <laughs> the Bears! <laughs>